I'm Pastor Tom Olson from Minnesota Valley Free Lutheran Church in Lakeville, Minnesota. We welcome you to our service, and if you'd like to follow along with hymn words and other helps, they're found at our website, mnvalleychurch.org. We begin our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we pray together? O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer and Comforter, we are assembled in your presence to hear your holy word. We pray that you will open our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that through the preaching of your word we may be taught to repent of our sins, to believe on Jesus in life and in death, and to grow day by day in grace and holiness. Hear us for Christ's sake. Amen. Our opening hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, was composed over 1,000 years ago and has been sung by Christians on Palm Sunday for over 1,000 years. All glory, laud, and honor to thee, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Thou art the King of Israel, thou David's royal Son, who in the Lord's name comest, the King and Blessed One. The company of angels are praising thee on high, and mortal men and all things created make reply. The people of the Hebrews with palms before thee went. Our praise and love and anthems before thee we present. To thee before thy passion they sang their hymns of praise. To thee now high exalted our melody we raise. Thou didst accept their praises, accept the love we bring, who in all good delightest, thou good and gracious King. At this time, we'll gather the children for the children's message. And uh, last me week, you met our little puppy here. Uh, we named him Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. And Barnabas, who is so encouraging and comforting, reminded us that we have another source of comfort from God, and that is the promises found in the Bible. And we are so comforted in these times by God's Word, the Bible. And today, Barnabas remembers, it helps us remember another source of comfort God has given us as we celebrate Holy Communion. You remember on Palm Sunday, Jesus wept. He wept when Lazarus, had friend, his friend, had died who lived at the base of the Mount of Olives. And then when Jesus came down from the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem, he looked at Jerusalem with so much sin, with so much unbelief, and he wept again. Jesus weeps because he cares for us. He cared for Lazarus and his family. He cares for Jerusalem. Do you ever cry when you get hurt? I'm sure you do. And Jesus cries too. And he weeps when we hurt, and he weeps when we have pain. But in Holy Communion, see this piece of bread, this wafer? Christ's body. And we remember Jesus, how he died on the cross for our sins. And in the cup, we see that wine, that grape juice. And we remember through the blood of Christ, that blood that was shed on the cross for forgiveness. But this also reminds us that one day Jesus is coming back to take us home. Until then, we have tough times in this world, and Jesus still sympathizes with us. But communion reminds us that all is well with our souls, and when he comes back, everything will be made right and good and happy forever for those of us who believe in him. So Barnabas reminds us today, through Holy Communion, of the comfort that we receive thinking about Jesus. Our message for this Palm Sunday is from John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19, and I read in Jesus' name. The next day the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Blessed is the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. These are thy words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus came down from the Mount of Olives and through that eastern gate into Jerusalem. That gate, I have a picture of it here, is all sealed shut today and there's even a cemetery in front of it. People are trying to stop Jesus from ever coming through that gate again. People who don't believe in him as their Savior. Well, he came down from the Mount of Olives on a donkey through that gate and the people shouted, Lord, save us, Hosanna. And he was riding to the cross, the gate to the cross. The second aspect of this gate I'd like to show you today here from John chapter 12 is it's also the gate to heaven. It's the gate that Jesus walked out of after he rose from the dead and went to the Mount of Olives to ascend to heaven. When Jesus ascended into heaven, recorded in Acts chapter 1, the disciples watched as a cloud took him up to heaven from their sight. And an angel spoke to them in verse 11, Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. It's the gate to heaven. Another aspect of this gate that I'd like to point out is that it is the gate to eternity. It's a gate to the coming kingdom. This same Jesus who, who was taken up to heaven as he left through this gate, one day will come back to the Mount of Olives and go through that gate again. And we read about this in the prophet Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 4. On that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley, with half the mountain moving to the north and half the mountain moving to the south. This will provide a way for God's people who in that day will be trapped there in the old city, in the temple area, by the enemies of God who have come against them to escape and flee. And then Jesus, I like to picture him um, coming in on a white horse, will just ride in there and be received, seated as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, ready to judge the nations. And then fourthly, we see the gate to salvation. You know, Jesus had every right on Palm Sunday to go right to the temple and declare himself to be the king and reign, but that wouldn't have taken care of the problem of sin. Before I found peace with God, I was terrified at the thought of Judgment Day. I was terrified at the thought of the return of Christ. I knew I was a sinner, and I knew that I deserved to go to hell. I was trying so hard to be good enough to deserve heaven and salvation, but I had no peace. But that all changed when I saw Jesus, who had ridden through that gate into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, and gone straight to the cross for my sins. 
I saw him dying for me. And I got peace in my heart knowing that he had fully paid for my salvation. A song puts it this way. Wounded for me, wounded for me. There on the cross he was wounded for me. Gone my transgression and now I am free. All because Jesus was wounded for me. When Jesus came into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, the people wanted a Savior from Roman rule, and they wanted a Savior from their problems. But that's not what they needed. Jesus could have seated himself as the king right there, but that wouldn't have taken care of the problem of sin and the problem of death. So he laid aside his heavenly crown and he traded it for a crown of thorns. He laid aside his heavenly scepter and he traded it for a cross and nails. He laid aside his royal robe and traded it for nakedness and shame. He laid aside his holiness and he traded it for our sin. He laid aside his life and he traded it for death on the cross that we deserved. When I was sinking down, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. It is a gate of salvation. And finally, it is a gate to the return of Christ. For 2,000 years, we have sang the ancient songs. We have reenacted the procession into Jerusalem, waving palm branches and shouting Hosanna. But for this year, this year, for the first time in 2,000 years, the churches all over the world are basically empty. The choirs are silent. The organs and trumpets are silent. There are no more thunderous shouts of Hosanna. It's almost like the eerie calm before the storm. I drive here by empty schools, empty stores, empty malls, silent bulldozers building half-built houses that are stopped in half-built housing additions. Everything is at an eerie standstill. It reminds me of the song from the 1970s about that same eastern gate we talked about today. That song goes like this. The marketplace is empty. No more traffic in the street. All the builder's tools are silent. No more time to harvest wheat. Busy housewives cease their labor. In the courtroom, no debate. Work on earth has been suspended as the king comes through the gate. Happy faces line the hallways those whose lives have been redeemed, broken homes that he has mended, those from prison he has freed, little children and the aged, hand in hand, stand all aglow, who were crippled, broken, ruined, clad in garments white as snow. I can hear the chariots rumble, I can see the marching throng, and the flurry of God's trumpet spells the end of sin and wrong. Regal robes are now unfolded. Heaven's grandstands all in place. Heaven's choir is now assembled. Start to sing amazing grace. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. Praise God. He's coming for me. Don't feel bad that you can't celebrate Palm Sunday in church without the palm procession this year because Jesus is coming back and one day we who believe in him will join him going through that gate in Jerusalem, that eastern gate, for his coronation as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. At that time, he joined the Passover procession of the Lamb and went to the cross to die for us but he is coming back to rule and to reign forever. For some of you who are listening, you might be frightened like I was before I got saved. And uh, for you, you should focus on the cross. Focus 
on the cross of Jesus Christ. Palm Sunday, going to that cross, taking your place and mine, dying for our sins, shedding his innocent blood. See his hands and feet nailed to that cross, his blood spilling on the sin-cursed ground to atone for all sin. And then come back next Sunday and we'll see what happened in three days. Won't you invite Jesus into your heart today? I'm so glad I did some 45 years ago. And now I have no fear of his return. I look forward to it because I know that my Savior, Jesus Christ, has great things ahead for his children. Won't you pray with me if you'd like to invite Jesus into your heart? Dear Father in heaven, thank you for sending your only Son to die on the cross for me. And now I invite him into my heart to forgive me of my sin and save my soul. Thank you for Jesus. Help me to tell others the good news of his great salvation. In his name I pray, amen. At this time, if you would like Holy Communion, I encourage you to stop the video and go get some bread and grape juice or wine and feel free to join me in Holy Communion. If you um, don't have that available, you can just partake of it in your heart as you look upon these elements. Let us together confess our sins. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Let us together confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you join me in praying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please feel free to hold up your bread. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, when he had eaten, he took the cup and he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now let us all receive Christ's body together, the body of Christ given for you and me. The blood of Christ shed for you and for me. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And now may the holy body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen.
Let us give thanks and pray. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with these gracious gifts. Strengthen us through them to love you with our whole heart and to love our neighbor as ourselves and to have complete confidence in the shed blood of Jesus to take away all our sins. Please help our leaders and all who are serving in the fight against this terrible coronavirus. May your healing presence be with all who are sick. And we ask that you would use this crisis to bring many people to faith in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. For we pray in his mighty name. Amen. Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. We encourage you to keep posted to our webpage, Minnesota Valley Church, mnvalleychurch.org, for upcoming announcements about Good Friday and Easter. May God bless you with a peaceful and uh, joyful day in the Lord. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. For more information or to contact us, please visit us on the web at mnvalleychurch.org or find us on Facebook at Minnesota Valley Church.